for the worst tampering case that uh, the commissioner's ever seen, does that seem like the worst penalty uh, he could have come up with for Stephen Ross and the Dolphins? Uh, I wrote on Outkick, Paul, um, the site that you also write for sometimes, yeah. and Jonathan and Chad, um, that they got off light. I thought that the Dolphins got off light, and I'm a little perturbed that nothing happens to Tom Brady. Nothing happens to Sean Payton. They're like, you know, treated like victims when in fact they were active participants in the tampering and Brady, an active participant over a three year span. So how is it that they just, you know, don't even get mentioned and yet uh, you, this was not your typical tampering in that, you know, game is played, game is over, both teams meet in the middle of the field, and maybe a coach tells a player, hey, dude, I know you're a free agent, come to us next year, or a player tells a coach, hey, I'm not under contract next year, come get me. This wasn't that. This was a pattern of behavior by the Miami Dolphins in that they know the tampering rules and just, you know, didn't care. And didn't care to the heights of ownership. It's one thing if the coach is in it or an assistant or some the owner, and then the owner who's in line to be the next owner were the two chief guys involved. And there's layered interest in this whole story to me, Armando, with, with all of this and what came out of this investigation. It states in, in the investigation, it was proven that the Dolphins did not tank games in that season. Stephen Ross then go, goes and puts out a statement that's a victory lap about how egregious it was that, you know, it was claimed that he said all these things. But then in the report, it basically says he did say these things about tanking and he did make a reference even if he said the intent was a joke about paying a hundred thousand dollars to brian flores to lose games over the course of the season so then i come down on this man brian flores may have a little bit here in this lawsuit not about the racist elements of it but now we're going to sit there and try to deliberate what was taken as a joke and what wasn't and what was the intent of what stephen ross was saying what did you make of that part of this, this report? At the core, the things that Brian Flores alleges about the Miami Dolphins in his lawsuit are true. And uh, it, Stephen Ross said, relative to tanking, that winning wasn't the most important thing for him. That the most that the priority for him during the 2019 season was situating the team as best as possible for the 2020 draft. That's in the report. And so that that is a mindset from the very top of the organization. And it wasn't just the very top of the organization. Ross repeated these things to the president of the team, the general manager of the team, the senior vice president in charge of the salary cap, and Coach Flores until the point where Flores got, you know, angry about it and was told, you know, Steve is on your side. Don't you worry about nothing. He's for you and with you. He loves you. He wants to win. And then Ross stopped telling those things to to Flores 